Okay, everyone, in the 587 class, we are going to take one last look at our last belief mode exercise, and then we're moving forward into our first design mode exercise. So in belief mode, we kind of pulled it all together with the knowledge building principles that were in module three. The knowledge building principles basically try to find a way to bring together the ideas that have been espoused by Scardamalia and Breiter in their research and writing based upon expert learner groups. And what they basically say is that the various aspects of the different knowledge building principles all come back to this foundation that's here. And that is the idea of connectivism, the idea of collaboration, constructivism, ideas to the center, and questioning. So constructivism is the idea that we construct new knowledge from old knowledge, um, that we carry around in our heads uh, artifacts that represent what we know. We know that new knowledge is best built in collaborative mode, working with other people. The ideas to the center is a way of giving credence to what kids think about the curriculum as opposed to just stuff in, stuff out through testing. And then, of course, the last one is questioning. Now, questioning is a little tricky because people think, well, it's, you know, let's ask questions. But if you really think about it, and we've all had this, uh, the whole point of good design is a good essential question that kids can branch off of. You know, there's, there's this sort of bias about uh, the knowledge building ideas that it's like, well, we're just throwing out the uh, curriculum. We're, we've never thrown out the curriculum. It's all about the curriculum. And what we're trying to do is we are trying to get the ideas that kids have about the curriculum to be front and center. Uh, the other person who talks a lot about this is, of course, Wiggins and McTighe in their understanding by design work. They talk a lot about moving ideas to the center that kids doing demonstrations of understanding that then have application, these are the ways that we know that kids really understand what they've learned. I've just popped into this link. Let me back up so I can show it to you again. Um, in this link, we are basically looking at the knowledge building principles in isolation. And what I've asked you to do is to take the time to look at this stuff, take the time to watch it, uh, because in here, this is where these 12 principles get defined for you. You need to think about, for your assignment in this one, is putting this into your thoughts and into your words using the tool VoiceThread. Now I've shown you this. Let me make sure that I show you the document that can help you with this. And that's right here, Knowledge Building Explained. If you open this document, what it will show you is, this is a little uh, or organizer that I created a few years ago uh, when I was working with teachers with the knowledge building principles. And what we were trying to get at here is we looked at the principle, we looked at what it means, and then we asked, so what would be the instructional ways of getting to this principle? And then what would be the kinds of technologies that we could use to understand this principle? 
and then what are the possible obstacles and how to use it, and then indicators. In other words, how do we know that this principle is actually in play? What I've done for the assignment for this is I've simplified it for you because what I wanted you to do was to really kind of internalize these ideas and not just um, do a jumping through the hoops. And what I wanted you to think about is when you think about the knowledge building principles. How can we best look at those in what we're going to be building here starting actually today? So what I've asked you to do is each one of the knowledge building principles, I want you to define it. Please feel free to copy and paste that uh, definition that I just showed you in that one document. Feel free to take that and just paste it straight into a PowerPoint. You're going to be using PowerPoint to create this. So here we go. I'll just copy that and put it into a PowerPoint slide. So there's one slide. I need to know then how to illuminate it. How do you see this principal slide in a classroom? Could be yours. I hope it is. Describe a classroom activity that employs some of the principles. Respond to each classmate's voice thread with your own PQP. Phrase, question, and propose. So as you can see, each one of the principles, really all, all you need to do is define it, eliminate it, and describe it. Can I do that on one PowerPoint slide? Yes, you can. This is not a class in PowerPoint design. So if you just have a slide that has a text box for this, and a text box for that, and a text box for that, that's fine. You take the whole PowerPoint and then you upload it into our voice thread for our knowledge building principles. Make an individual VT, please. Create a new voice thread. And as you can see, it's sitting here waiting for me to upload the PowerPoint that you have created. A PowerPoint with, it can be as minimal as 12 slides. In other words, a slide for each one of the principles. And that's all you need to do. Let me throw a real quick down and dirty PowerPoint in there that has nothing to do with our class, but just to show you how it looks and how it works. So this is a PowerPoint that has to do with um, a PLN, which is a class I taught last week. So you, as you can see, it's asking me to make sure I put a title in it. So your title is going to be Your Name Knowledge Building Principles. And now what it's doing is it's cranking away uploading this PowerPoint. Now this PowerPoint is going to take a little while because uh, it has lots of pictures and lots of video, etc. Yours doesn't have to have that. Just keep it simple. Follow the guidelines and think. Read that document that I posted for you right here. And then think about how it applies in your classroom to the prompts that are in the knowledge building, but you have to start here. You have to start by watching all of this so that you can understand and read this so that you can understand what it is that this is all about. I'm sorry to be jumping around here, but I'm trying to um, come back to the voice thread to show it to you. And once I get into the voice thread, it's kind of hard to get out of the voice thread. So while that's loading, let's look one more time at the free things, free things that you're going to use in your 
voice thread that you're building. So in this one, what we are looking for is a definition. And I'll get there here in a second. I know I'm doing a lot of jumping around. Don't worry about doing an ABC of Word Cloud or pictures or video. You don't need to do any of that. Okay? All you need to do is define it, which I've already shown you how to do that. You come over here and you copy that, paste it into your slide. Eliminate it. How do you see the principle applied in a classroom? Now, this is where you have to think. But you can use your document over here. You can definitely listen to the videos where they describe it to you. And then think about a classroom activity that could employ, doesn't have to be all the principles, but one that would be available, that we could understand how the principle could be seen in an activity going on in the classroom. So let's try this. So let's go back to here. Real ideas, authentic problems. Knowledge problems arise from efforts to understand the world. Not typical end of chapter textbook problems. Problems drive learning, not just for practice after learning. So in this instance, that's going to be the definition. Now, how do you see this applied in a classroom? Giving kids an opportunity to explore the classroom content through the use of project-based learning activities where they're asked to design, they're asked to describe, they're asked to build, and that's illumination. And then describe the classroom activity that employs some of these, you're kind of thinking the other way now. So if you have a classroom activity that would be able to use this one, Real Ideas, Authentic Problems. What would that look like? We're studying um, Shakespeare. And one of the things that we have been talking about in Shakespeare is the characters and how they interact with each other. So then, how would the knowledge building principle of real ideas, authentic problems look there. That one's an easy if you think about it, especially when it comes to Shakespeare. Can you think of an experience you've had that coincides with the story of, oh my gosh, Macbeth? Can you think of an experience, or can you think of a, a situation that would coincide with the story behind um, As You Like It. I mean, there's all kinds of ways that you can do this. So, there you are. All of this can fit on a very simple PowerPoint slide. As I said, you don't need to worry about all this fancy dancy up here. Let's just keep it focused on the principles. Now, let me jump back in and let's see how my if my PowerPoint ever put it in. The idea of voice threads are simple. The idea is that I'm going to pop over here and see if I can see what I made. Okay, so let's go into here, Mr. Test. And I'm going to go back in, I'm going to edit this. And so here's my slides that I've just uploaded. They were in a PowerPoint. Now, don't let this blow you away. It's a very big PowerPoint. That's not the point. Keep your PowerPoint simple and to the point of what we're trying to do. But here's where it's different. Click on a slide. Click on comment. And then this is where you're thinking can now be captured. 
and I can click on the microphone and I can put my thinking about each one of them, my thinking about the definition, the illumination, and the application. Go to the next slide. Do the same thing. Go to the next slide. Do the same thing. Go to the next slide. You just keep working through your slides, leaving comments as you go. When you're finished, it's, it's saving the entire time. When you're finished, the way you put it into our live text is you can do a couple of ways. I would take a look at the embed. I don't think I would use the embed code. I would just go to the link. And so you can copy this link, paste it into the URL, or paste the URL into the live text assignment, and then when I click on it, it'll take me to your voice thread. Now, the other thing that's in there that's kind of hard for us to do is the expectation that everybody comments on everybody else's uh, stuff. Well, we're kind of coming into this class at various times, various places. Um, I would like you to at least, there's not that many of you, there's only four, is to go through and just look at each other's stuff and make a comment along the lines of, I never thought about that. That's a praise. And then the question is, you would ask about, so how did you want to do that? And then the proposal might be an idea that you might have about what the person has talked about in their voice thread. All right. So that is a review of Module 3 and the work we have to do. Remember, take the time, look at the resources that I've put in here for you. Start there. And then use this document to then start building your little PowerPoint where you take and put in each one of the knowledge building principles. Just copy the definitions. Use this as guides to help you understand what it is you're looking for for the illumination and application bit. Upload the finished PowerPoint into VoiceThread and then create your comments, basically helping us understand what your thinking was when you put in the activities, when you put in the ways that you can see the principles being applied in a classroom. I keep saying in a classroom, but really it's your classroom. All right. Now, let's start design. So when we look at design, we're going to be looking at something called Quality Matters. Quality Matters is a recognized rubric for the design of online and distance ed courses. It is a roadmap. I think it's probably one of the most important things I can give you. Because when you go in to design your online course in Schoology or Blackboard, if you want to use Blackboard and you already have a Blackboard account through your school district, we can't give you a Blackboard account here at, at uh, U of L. That's why we have the Schoology for you. But what it does is it basically gives you these standards. And like I said, it's a roadmap. And so your first one would be your course overview and introduction. Hello, my name is Steven Swan. I'm going to be your teacher. This is what we're going to be doing in this class. You can do that in multiple ways. And we'll go into this deeper, OK? So don't freak out that you have to do it right now. We'll do this next week when we do Schoology. By the way, do you realize you have only uh, just 
really one more module left after this, and we can pretty well, you know, wrap up and go to the final. So we're moving through this rather quickly. So the course objectives and introduction, the learning objectives, assessment and measurement, resources and material, learner interactions, course technology, learner support, and accessibility. So these, this is important, this is the most important, learner activities, objectives, excuse me. This is where we actually put it down, what we want kids to be able to do inside this course. Assessment and measurement is so ridiculously simple to do now through tools like the built-in tools that are in Schoology already, or we'll talk about Edpuzzle next week. Um, resources and materials, once again, that's an organizational tool that you use inside of Schoology to give kids access to things. And then the learner interaction, we have to think about how do kids interact with this course that we're designing. The course technologies, you know, that's what you use. <laughs> Are you having kids use other technologies within the course? Um, you can use tools like uh, BlendSpace to actually have creations that kids can put in there, pick the charts. All these things we're going to go over that are available for you to use. Learner support. How do people reach back to you as the owner of the course to ask questions? Like in this course, how do you reach back to ask me questions? Well, he puts his SMS text number out there. See how easy it is? And then access, 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 <laughs> accessibility um, is how is your course designed so that it's easy for people to read it, see it, work their way around it. Again, this is something you do within whatever you work with um, in Blackboard or Schoology. So we'll be looking at that. Here is the document that we will be using. And this is our Schoology course. You don't need to jump into this right now. We will do that next week. So here is the document itself. When you look at this, let me pull it up so it's easier for you to see and for me to see. As you can see, it is these standards that have been broken down into substandards. So when we look at the standard number one, which is course overview and introduction, we're looking to see, are there instructions that make it clear how to get started and where to find things? Are students introduced to the purpose and structure of the course? Are etiquette expectations, some kind, sometimes called netiquette, are they spelled out? Does the course in our instructional policies which which the students expected to comply? Now, if you think about this, how do we get this done in a lot of ways in courses? In the syllabus. So if you have a syllabus attached to your course, you're hitting a lot of these particular aspects of course overview and introduction. Drop down here to learning objectives. Well, I think we kind of know what this one's about. But the point of this is I should be able to find this somewhere in your course. Now, in Schoology, you can have a folder that's called course objectives. And inside of that, then, is a document where you list all the things that the kids are going to be learning. You have to have outcomes that are measurable. You know this. This is not rocket science. This is not something you're not familiar with. Go down to the next one, assessment and measurement. Assessment and measurement is one of those that can get a little gnarly. What I love about it is there's so many different ways now to do assessment through an online course that gives good quality feedback to the teacher. I think there's probably more choices in formative assessment now than there ever has been. And the beauty of it is it can all be embedded into your online course. It can be embedded as a part of the course. In other words, Schoology has a 
quiz tool. You can use tools like Edpuzzle that allow you to take a YouTube video and turn it into a formative assessment that gives you data. You can use a tool like Nearpod that will allow you to take um, PowerPoints that you create and then within that you can actually then insert little formative checkpoints within the PowerPoint to see if kids are learning. All of that can then be embedded inside your online course. Remember one of the terms I used is what we were looking to do here is, and this is a, this is a Marlene um, idea, is that we want to move away from online courses being flat. Um, and you've experienced that with that first module that you did. And you hated all of the stupid things that I made you jump through. If we have a course that's very topographical, where kids are able to jump into other things, create in other things, and then put their creations into the course. Um, but, you know, and I want to make sure you understand, because I've seen some Schoology courses that are used in JCPS, where it's basically just a thing that says, download the attached Word document and go in and do this and do this and this. Use this Excel to do this, do this, and this. There's nothing wrong with that. But the point is, what am I creating? Going back to knowledge building principles, what am I creating that moves my ideas of the curriculum to the center there, as opposed to just regurgitation? Now, we know that regurgitation sometimes is done so that we can make sure everybody has an understanding of the terminology. Nothing wrong with that. And that's what good formative assessments that we'll be playing with in Schoology allow you to do. But to get to that topographical kind of take of your online course, we need to have kids to be able to drop in and drop out of the course to do things in other places and then bring those back into the course that reflects their thinking. Instructional materials. The instructional materials contribute to the achievement of the stated um, course objectives. Uh, again, this is what I'm talking about when I talk about using outside links. So if I pop you over into a blend space and ask you to create a blend space where you put together your thinking about what's going on, um, I've seen one uh, that was at the uh, Deeper Learning Conference that was going on at the fairgrounds called Buncee. Kind of interesting, kind of does the same sort of thing. But the idea is, do the instructional materials really allow for kids to create their understandings? Learner interactions and engagement. Again, this is a central point of knowledge building. Do we have a way for there to be a collaborative nature to the online course? Is there something going on in here? Is something as simple as a discussion thread? Is there something going on in there that allow kids to sit and write about what they've done and what they're thinking and look at it, what other people have done and write about what they're doing and what they're thinking? If we can get that going in a course, my goodness, the amount of, of knowledge that gets passed around is just staggering. Course technology is course technology. Yeah. Yes, I'm using Schoology. I'm using these tools within the Schoology, uh, Edpuzzle, et cetera, et cetera. Learn support. How do people get to you? How do people get to the uh, instructor? So that, you know. And then accessibility. Uh, this is one of those things where, you know, it's kind of like, do you use large text for people who have trouble seeing? Um, if you can't use large text, do you put in directions on how to increase the screen size so if people who can't see can see it? Do you have instructions for how to turn on the ability for a screen reader to kick in? Do you have instructions on how to, if there's a word that's difficult to understand, how you can highlight that word and use the tools available to you in the browser to find out definitions. Now, what it also has is it has scores. So anything that has a score of three is considered an essential. I'm sliding this over so you can see the scores. 
and I hope this is uh, filling in the page for you. So if we look up here, let's go all the way up to number one. If we look at number one, course overview and introduction, if you look over here, you can plainly see what Quality Matters is indicating is the real essential. So threes indicate that it's essential. The twos indicate, and this is how I describe it, it would be nice. <laughs> it would be nice if you had this in there. And then one is kind of a, you know, take or leave it. Um, and so, as you can see, as we go down through here, the threes are all about introducing the instructor, how to get started, find the online course components. Students are introduced to the purpose, the structure of the course. Then we drop down here to adequate, uh, etiquette expectations, student etiquette are kind of explained. It's kind of like when you're in online discussions, don't call each other names. You know, stuff like that. Course and or instructional policies with students is expected to comply. You know, this would be like in your syllabus that you have for this class. There's the stuff in there about you don't they don't uh, cheat and you don't plagiarize. Okay, and then um, sometimes you'll need to have some minimized technical skills. You know, you can just say things in in simple sentences about the the uh, technical technology we'll be using in the class. We'll have instructional videos attached to it to show you how to do it. Okay? And then when you go down to the next one, which is kind of the biggie. So when you look at this one, as you can see, it's all threes down the line. And so this is the one that when you look at a course and you look at your course, because the way the grading in this class is going to work, the way the final is going to work, you're going to design something and then you are going to self-grade yourself. In other words, you're going to go in and you're going to say, okay, on rubric number two, I can give myself a three all the way down because I hit every single one of these, all five of them. Then I'll come back in and I'll do the scoring as well. And then your grade is based upon the design, how well the knowledge building principles are embedded into that design, and then your self-reflection. So when you go down to three, again, you can see the first three, and then the twos, I think you're getting the idea. And to scroll down through here, you can see what it thinks are the really important things to include. So the first question you can ask me is, so Steve, does this mean that I don't need to worry about the ones. Yes, actually, you don't need to worry about the ones. The twos are the, it would be nice, and then the threes are, it needs to be in there. And that, my friends, is the Quality Matters rubric. It is a roadmap. It is a very clear design outline for you when you get ready to start thinking about building an online course. Now let me show you how what you're going to do is done. So what we're asking you to do for this particular exercise is we're going to ask you to go into, and I tell you what, these down here um, are e uh, examples that are in various locations. If they don't work, don't panic, don't freak out. Here's where I think you should go. So go into the module itself. Watch these videos, please. Please watch these videos. Read this. Read this. Because it will do the job of really getting your head into how this works. This is another really good video because it kind of walks you through what I just did. So if you need to see it again. Now, here are the Schoology examples that we're going to use as a way for you to practice using the QM rubric. And as you can see, uh, these courses, uh, unfortunately, <clears throat> they're all high school. 
there's a couple on the top level of the module, I think, that are middle and elementary. But, you know, I think you can look at this. As you can see here, I've got a couple of middle grades. I apologize. I've got a social studies one, I've got a science one, and I've got a math one. So we can, we can hit the middle and the high school, high school pretty well. Now, do not click on this link. <laughs> this, is a, this is the username that you're going to use to get into this. So let me go ahead and highlight that username. And I'm going to need to pay attention to what my uh, password is, which is J21VA, all caps. So I'm going to click on that link that's going to take me over to here. And I'm going to log in. And when I get logged in, what I can do is I go to Courses. Bada bing, bada boom. Now I am into those courses that we saw back there that you can use as examples. So I'm going to open up this course, and here I am. I'm in a sample science course, eighth grade, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now what I want to have is my document. I want to have my QM document because what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to go down through that class and go QM by QM standard. And let's pop up to the top level because that's where the document was. And I'm going to use that document to then evaluate this course. Here it is. And there we are. So, a little moving around on the screen. Or you can print it out. Well, actually, don't print it out. Use it this way. So I'm going to go down through here, and I'm going to look at number one. And then I'm going to look over here, and I'm going to see, is there anything here? Oh, she's got an introduction. Welcome to 8th grade science. Click on the materials tab on the left for an example of the curriculum. If you have any questions, please contact Kelly at such and such and such and such. Oh, look, Kelly even has a face there. So when I go back over here, and I start looking at the rubric, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to look at number one. I'm going to say, did the instructor make clear how to get started and where to find the things? And I'm going to click right there and I'm going to say, yes, a three. Students are introduced to the course and the structure. Yes. And I'm going to put that right here and I'm going to make it a two. Are you seeing what I'm doing? Now, what if she doesn't? What if she didn't have that? If she doesn't have anything, you put a zero. If you don't think that what she did rises to the level of it being essential to the course, give it a one. Is it a, is it a oh, it's kind of nice to be there, give it a two. But you can see how now you are evaluating the course, because it's already telling you that it needs to be a free. And if it's not a free, what is it? Now, a lot of these, when you go into them, you're going to find you're given zeros. And that's fine, because that's what we want to be conscious of what we're doing. Now, I just went over here where she said to click on the course materials. And now I'm seeing, oh, wait a minute. Here's some information about the course. Informa about the course. Now things are really starting to show up here. So make sure you follow all the way through looking at the course. Then go pull up your QM rubric worksheet and start filling it out. OK? Uh, I'll tell you, just as a little heads up, 
most of these classes that are in here will score very well on this. There are a couple <laughs> that will not score very well. And that's okay if you find those because that's the point. You are looking through it and you are saying, okay, where do I see... Sorry, I keep blowing this up so it's easy for me to be able to talk about it and point to it. Where do I see that instructions make clear how to get started and where the various... Con well, she says that right away. She says, go into here and look in the materials link right over here, which we did. And then all of a sudden, here's all this other stuff. So in this other stuff, then are students introduced to the purpose and content of the course? I would think so. It says, contains course syllabus. Hello. Instructor contact information. Hello. And other general information. And then, down here, she actually starts going into all the things that are contained in here. She has assignments. She has assessments. She has lots and lots and lots of stuff. Okay. I think we've covered the waterfront on this particular um, two modules. Doing a little cleanup on module number three. I hope you understand now that the purpose of the voice thread is for you to create a simple PowerPoint. As I said, one slide per knowledge building principle with the three different things would work just wonderfully. Upload the whole PowerPoint into your voice thread and then comment on each one of the slides that this is my thinking. That's the point is you're sharing your thinking. This is what I think this particular knowledge building principle means. Don't read to me the definition. Read to me your thinking about the definition. Then tell me how you see that then illuminated in a class. And then tell me a class activity that it would be contained within. For module four, we went through the rubric I need you to take the time to watch the videos because they will do a very good job and then you'll be sitting there going, oh, okay, I get it. Make sure you use this document and then when you're finished with reviewing one of the Schoology sites that are located here. Remember, this is a username. It's not a link. This is the link, and you put this username in and that password, and then you can go in and see the courses that are available when you click on the courses link that is in Schoology. Pardon me. Now I closed it out. But you're going to open up the Schoology link and then open up the courses at the top and then decide which course that you want to evaluate using the Quality Matters rubric. This document then becomes a document that you turn in to live text using the attachment feature. If you don't know how to do that, drop me a text and I'll walk you through it. It's very simple. All right. Oh, hey, Paige. I didn't know there was someone in the room. How are we doing? No, you do not work with a partner. There's not enough of you to have partners. Unless you want to come in here and sit in my office and work with me if you're having a problem, which is always a option for anybody in the course. If something's really got you buffaloed and you just want to sit in here in front of the big board and work on it, then that's fine. All righty. I'm going to close down shop for the evening unless you've got, since you're here, Paige, you can ask me a question. Uh, I think this Module 4 is very straightforward, uh, and it's actually a lot of fun going in. When you take the time to go in and look at these other examples, feel free to steal when you go to design your own. Okay. Um, I will see you all next Monday when we will review the Module 4, and then we will go straight into building within uh, Schoology. And then, kids, we are just about done. 
unless I need you all to write back to me if any of you want to use Blackboard. Now, if you are a um, teacher in Jefferson County Public Schools, I can contact the people who run the Blackboard in JCPS, which, by the way, JCPS uses Quality Matters, uh, and get you a, a space. If you just want to use the Schoology, fine. Then we're all going to stick together and use Schoology. So please let me know that if you're going to be a Schoology user, and I'll send out an email to that effect, or if you want to be a Blackboard user. So I'll see you next Monday. You all have a wonderful week.